Good morning and welcome. We are live at Highlands United Methodist Church in the Faith and Fellowship Center as we are gathering now for a virtual service of worship on August the 2nd, 2020. It's uh, 10 o'clock in the morning here on this Sunday. If you are joining us in this virtual space at this time, uh, we bid you welcome. If you are worshiping with us, watching this video at some other time, we welcome you also. We are delighted and honored that you are here with us today. I'm Randy Lucas. I'm the pastor of the church. I am joined our worship team this morning, Christine Murphy, our director of children and youth ministries. You'll hear from Christine a little later. Mike Murphy, again, our producer today. We have Susan Clearman at the piano. We have Les Scott, our minister of music, and we have Carol Shuttleworth here, who is going to be one of our singers today. So we're delighted to have these folks gathered here, and we are delighted to have you gathered there at home or wherever you may be today. We had uh, five minutes worth of trivia as we uh, we're moving toward our worship together. If you enjoyed that, I would remind you that we are bringing back one of our favorite Wednesday night programs, Trivia Night with Mike. That's coming up August the 12th. We'll tell you more about that a little later on in our service this morning. I would also remind you, if you're joining us now in this virtual space in the 10 o'clock hour, if you'd like to send in your prayer request, I believe some of you have already started doing that. If you have a prayer need that you would like Christine to specifically speak to, when she offers the prayer later this morning. Please go ahead and begin adding those in the comment section of the Facebook feed, and Christine is keeping an eye on that. With that word of welcome and instruction, again, we are thrilled to have you with us as we gather in worship on this Sunday. And I would now turn to Jacob Lancaster, one of our Duke Summer Ministry interns, for our morning prayer. Good morning, Highlands Church. Please pray with me. God, we gather here once again this Sunday to praise your name. Lord, we've gone through a week and we're hungry. We're hungry for your spirit. We're hungry for the nourishment that only you can give us. So Lord, as we gather here this morning, feed us. Open our hearts to your love. Let us be receptive to the word that you speak into our lives, a word that transforms and nourishes. Amen. Now join us in singing Down by the Riverside. first reading this morning is from the book of Genesis, chapter 32, verses 22 through 31. 
The same night, he got up and took his two wives, his two maids, and his eleven children, and crossed the ford of the Jabbok. He took them and sent them across the stream, and likewise everything that he had. Jacob was left alone, and a man wrestled with him until daybreak. When the man saw that he did not prevail against Jacob, he struck him on the hip socket. And Jacob's hip was put out of joint as he wrestled with him. Then he said, Let me go, for the day is breaking. But Jacob said, I will not let you go unless you bless me. So he said to him, What is your name? And he said, Jacob. Then the man said, You shall no longer be called Jacob, but Israel. For you have striven with God and with humans and have prevailed. Then Jacob asked him, Please tell me your name. But he said, Why is it that you ask my name? And there he blessed him. So Jacob called the place Peniel, saying, For I have seen God face to face, and yet my life is preserved. The sun rose upon him as he passed Penuel, limping because of his hip. This is the word of God for the people of God. Thanks, Thanks be, be to, God. to God. Let us now say together the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, dead, and buried. The third day he rose from the dead. He ascended into heaven and sitteth at the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From thence he shall come to judge the quick and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. And now as we begin our time of prayer this morning, we are going to take a couple of minutes to center our hearts and our minds along with the band.
Let us pray. Gracious Lord, we are filled with a mixture of feelings today. Some of us are rejoicing in the wonderful time of rest and relaxation, while others continue to seek relief from the burdens and worries that they bear. All of us stand in need of your refreshing and nourishing love and forgiveness. You know how many times we have turned our backs on those in need. We have been too busy, too preoccupied with our own problems. Cause us to turn around and see instances in which we can be of help and comfort to someone else. Give us strength and courage to truly be your loving disciples in the ways in which we care for others. Forgive us when we stray from the paths of righteousness and peace. And Lord, just as Jacob asked for a blessing from the angel, we come to you for blessings. There are so many times in our lives in which we have felt alienated, downtrodden, and alone. It is easy for us to wallow in our misery, to whine about all the perceived injustices that have been heaped upon us. But you encourage us to stand strong, to seek the blessings that you have provided for us, to recognize the many ways that you are with us, giving us strength and courage. Be with us again, precious Lord, and guide our lives. This morning, we also come together and bring others to you who are in need. Today, we pray especially for Nellie, Bailey, Will, Peter, Holly, Jackson, Maxie, Howe, Jill, Grace, Peter, Tyler, Courtney, Quentin, the family of Jamie, the Bost family, Anne, Jeff, Zane, Danielle and family, Howe, Carter, Thomas, Bethany, Natalie, Peggy, Dawn, Special prayers for the parents, teachers, and students as schools start to reopen. And prayers for the Highlands class of 2020, which graduated yesterday. As we have brought our prayers before you for those near and dear to us, seeking healing and hope for him, let us also remember that those same mercies are lavished upon us, not because we deserve them, but because of your great and generous love for us. Help us receive these blessings and in turn to go out and be a blessing to someone else. For we ask these things in the name of Jesus Christ, our Savior, who taught us to pray together and say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. Amen. We come to that time in our service where we celebrate our joys. And again, I would remind you, we love having you to share your joys with us. That can be a part of our virtual worship service, whether in the form of a picture or a selfie video. Uh, we uh, encourage and welcome that, and we'll share some of those that we have for this week in just a moment. I would remind you about our virtual coffee hour as well. Again, this is just a brief uh, few moments after our worship this morning. Again, if you're joining us live in the 10 o'clock hour on Sunday morning, August the 2nd, and Mike provides a link for the Zoom meeting in the comment section. So be on the lookout for that. We'd love to have you come, and we'll just kind of wave and check in and say hello and have some fellowship at the close of our worship this morning. Uh, one thing I do want to uh, celebrate today, we are having Holy Communion and just want to encourage you to have your elements with you at the close of our service this morning. We will celebrate that together. We will have, uh, it, so if you can have uh, grape juice or some other fruit of the vine and bread or crackers and we will celebrate Holy Communion virtually today. We are delighted to celebrate anniversaries today and uh, birthdays and so uh, just invite you to be mindful of these folks who are celebrating special days uh, today and throughout the week. Uh, we celebrate our anniversaries and birthdays of our HUMC family today. If by chance uh, you have a birthday coming up or an anniversary and we didn't have it named, just let the church office know and we certainly will get that uh, corrected and added. Uh, we want to share some pictures now. Look at this beautiful shot of the moon that Greg Clarkson provided for us. How lovely that is 
uh, we thank Greg for that. Greg has such an eye, such a great photographer, and he also sent us a picture of a visitor there at their home. Uh, you folks uh, recognize that bear. I'm sure you've probably seen it around in different places here in Highlands, or bears that look very much like that one. So we thank Greg for those two great pictures. Remsen Solomon uh, sent us another beautiful flower picture uh, there from uh, his home, he and Charlotte's home. So we thank Remsen for sharing that beautiful shot with us uh, today. And our, uh, our, our summer Duke ministry interns are wrapping up. Next Sunday will be their last time with us. Uh, Angie has led a book study that wrapped up this week. And uh, Elizabeth Gordon sent us that picture. This was a Zoom shot of their class on their last night uh, together. So we thank them for that. I mentioned earlier that we will have a trivia night with Mike coming up. Uh, that's been one of our most popular Wednesday night programs. Remember Wednesday night programs? We used to do that when we would gather here and eat on Wednesday nights. We'd have a family fellowship supper and a program. So uh, we won't be able to gather uh, in this physical space and have a meal at this point, but we can have a virtual trivia night with Mike. So if you are interested in learning more about that, if you want to have the Zoom link information, just in the comment section you see there in the note, you can let Mike know in the comment section that you are interested either in... Uh, participating in the competition as an individual or as a team, and Mike will give you all the information that you need relative to that. As we gather for our virtual uh, offering this morning, again, let me just say a word of thanks to those of you who continue to support the life and ministry of Highlands United Methodist Church. I, I'm sure you are aware these are challenging times for all churches uh, when our congregations are not able to gather physically, and so we are grateful for your continued generosity and support of the ministry of this congregation. You can mail your offering in, you can drop it by the church. Uh, the office is not open on a regular basis, but we do have the mailbox on the front porch there where the rocking chairs are on Main Street, and you can give online. I'm going to go step away and do that right now myself and give my, uh, mine and Kathy's virtual offering for today. If you go to our website, you can navigate that very easily. So as we enter into the virtual space now, this virtual time of offering, we'll look to the band to play. pray. God, we're grateful for the abundance of your gifts to us and that you entrust us with what belongs to you for a season. So we ask your blessings upon the gift and the giver. We ask your blessings on the work and the ministry of this church and all congregations who are trying to be faithful, especially in this strange season. And we ask 
that you would help us to be good and faithful stewards of that which you entrust to our care. In your holy name we pray. Amen. We'll look now to Les and Carol and Susan. Let us be bread. A reading from the Gospel of Matthew, chapter 14, verses 13 through 21. Now when Jesus heard this, he withdrew from there in a boat to a deserted place by himself. But when the crowds heard it, they followed him on foot from the towns. When he went ashore, he saw a great crowd, and he had compassion for them, and cured their sick. When it was evening, the disciples came to him and said, This is a deserted place, and the hour is now late. Send the crowds away, so that they may go into the villages and buy food for themselves. Jesus said to them, They need not go away. You give them something to eat. They replied, We have nothing here but five loaves and two fish. And he said, Bring them here to me. Then he ordered the crowds to sit down on the grass. Taking the five loaves and the two fish, he looked up to heaven and blessed and broke the loaves and gave them to the disciples. And the disciples gave them to the crowds and all ate and were filled. And they took up what was left over of the broken pieces, twelve baskets full. 
And those who ate were about 5,000 men, besides women and children. This is the word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. Thanks be to God. Thanks, Jacob. You know, this is the only miracle story in uh, any of the four Gospels or, or in, in, the, in the New Testament Gospel recordings of the life of Jesus. This is the only miracle story that Jesus performed that is recorded in all four Gospels. Now, I don't know that that means we give it any greater credence or we view it any differently, but it is interesting, and I think it's just worthy of note. It is one of those stories that uh, has stirred the imagination of generations of Christians uh, for the past 2,000 plus years, this, this marvelous story of the multiplication of these meager resources that become uh, more than enough, from meager to more than enough. It's interesting that in uh, Matthew's telling of the story of Jacob, would have, if we would have asked Jacob to have read a little earlier, the story that bumps right up to the feeding of the 5,000 in Matthew's gospel is the story of John's uh, beheading. Uh, in fact, when Jacob said, this, uh, when Jesus heard this, that's what Jesus has just heard. He's heard about the execution of John the Baptist. Mark and Luke also put that story right up against the feeding of the 5,000. But it's really only in Matthew's gospel that those two seem to be connected. Jesus has just heard about this when he withdraws to a deserted place by himself. And so you get the idea in Matthew's gospel that, that Jesus is trying to get away for some time of grief, perhaps, some time of reflection. He's just heard about John's death, and so his next thing is to go away to a deserted place. So in Matthew's telling of the story, again, you really get the sense of those two things being very much uh, connected. And you can really appreciate that. We all know what it's like to just need some time to ourselves. And of course, since mid-March, we've had plenty of time to ourselves, and we're ready for time together now. We're ready uh, to have this virtual space become the physical space again, and we all get it. We all are feeling that. We all want to be in fellowship with one another again. But, but we do understand what it's like to just need some time to ourselves. And we really get a sense in the flow of the narrative, that's what's going on for Jesus right now. He just needs some time to himself. But when he, when he gets to shore and he steps on shore and he looks around, he doesn't find the peace and the solitude that perhaps his spirit was needing. What he saw was a great crowd. All these people from all the towns had followed on foot and this great multitude of people meeting him when he steps on shore. And Jesus' response is such a Jesus-like response. He had compassion and he cured their sick. You know, when I hear Jacob read that, I, I think about another bit of scripture we looked at not too many weeks ago in the ninth and 10th chapter of the Gospel of Matthew where Jesus looks out upon the crowd. Remember how Matthew records this in the ninth chapter. He went about all the cities and villages teaching in their synagogues, proclaiming the good news of the kingdom, curing every disease and every sickness. When he saw the crowds, he had compassion for them because they were harassed and helpless like sheep without a shepherd. I think about that moment for Jesus, his compassion for the crowds. Once again, in our text for today, Jesus displaying his compassion for the crowd. So, if you remember when we looked at that bit of scripture from a few weeks ago, we talked about the missional discourse, Jesus sending out his disciples in the 10th chapter to the crowds that Jesus had compassion for, sending all of those disciples out to be in ministry and mission to the crowds, born out of Jesus' compassion for them because they were like sheep without a shepherd. And so compassion in that story and the compassion of Jesus in this story. His compassion really sets the stage for everything that's about to happen, the compassion that he has to cure their sick, the compassion that he has uh, to feed the multitude. It's also interesting the role of the disciples in both of those stories, in the missional discourse in the 10th chapter that comes out of that compassionate uh, experience Jesus has for the crowds, when Jesus sends them forth to be in mission and ministry. And, and in our story today, it's the disciples who also engage with Jesus in caring for the needs of the crowd. And so the role of the disciples in both of those 
compassionate expressions of Jesus seems to me to be worthy of note. The disciples, of course, protest when Jesus tells them to to feed this great multitude because they certainly don't have what it takes to, to feed this multitude. In fact, in fact, in all of the Gospels, Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John, the disciples say to Jesus, there's no way they can feed this great multitude. There's just too many. Matthew adds a word that I find interesting that you don't find in Luke or Mark or John. When the disciples respond in Matthew, they don't say, you know, we don't have enough or there's too many people. They say, we have nothing here but five loaves and two fish. Nothing. When they looked at the crowd and they saw this tremendous crowd, what they had was so meager as to look to them as nothing. Nothing. And I hear the weight of that. You know, this story, again, enlivens our, our imagination. This story uh, makes us perhaps think of times when we have seen something like this transpire in our own life or maybe in the life of the church. You know, you've found yourself in that situation where the need to feed was so much greater than the resources you had available. We were actually looking at this story uh, last week, I think, in our Disciple for Bible study. And Paula Gordon was sharing with us a number of years ago when the church and the community were doing a, a big fundraiser uh, for Butch and Judy Smart when a uh, coach was dealing with his cancer and uh, the community came together and they sold tickets and so they got food based on the tickets but a lot more people showed up than they had sold tickets for and, and there was some concern would they have enough money, uh, have enough food but they miraculously had enough food and more to share. I think about a few years ago here uh, when a hurricane uh, kind of touched into our area and a lot of uh, the region was out of power. Highlands was out of power for two or three days. We had some power here for a time here at the church. And so we kind of became that central location where the local power crews and the power crews that were coming from other areas uh, would come here to eat. And so uh, Ann Rose was our kitchen director at that time. And Ann was in the kitchen feverishly trying to come up with food uh, to, to feed the folks. And the people just kept coming in. We had all these work crews that kept coming in. And, and I remember Ann uh, found some packets of instant soup. I think it was potato soup. And she kept adding water to it and adding water. And, you know, before it was over, everybody had their fill. They had everything that they wanted. And we remembered the story of the loaves and fish. Maybe you've had those experiences too where it just didn't seem like you had enough, but you ended up having more than enough and you couldn't help but remember this story. One of the things about this story that's fascinating when Jesus makes this, this multiplication and, and breaks the bread, blesses it, gives it to the disciples, the disciples uh, give it to the crowds, and, and Matthew makes it clear it's not that they just have enough to snack on. They don't have just a, a morsel or a nibble to get them to the next meal. No, they eat their fill. They have more than enough. And not only do they have more than enough, when all is said and done, when they gather up the fragments of all the broken pieces, there are 12 baskets full. Twelve baskets full. There was more left over than there was at the beginning. It's really an amazing story. It's an amazing, hopeful word. It's, well, it's a reminder of a number of things. Now, the Jewish people, when they would have heard this story, they would have, they would have connected with the twelve baskets, right? The twelve tribes of Israel. Perhaps they would have remembered how God fed the children of Israel in their 40-year sojourn in the wilderness with manna from heaven. Maybe those memories would have come back uh, to mind for them. You know, I think there are a lot of things we could say about this story. I think one of the things that comes to mind for me is this, this is a story on a basic level about feeding and being fed. It's a reminder to me of the partnership that God has entered into with humanity in Christ to feed the sheep and to tend and to care and to offer compassion and to be in ministry. It's a, a beautiful reminder of how God uses the followers of Christ to make a difference in the world. I think at the basic level, too, it's a reminder that God is not limited by our meager resources. 
when we look at the great need around us and we might be tempted to respond as the disciples responded, we have nothing. God is not limited. In fact, I'm, I'm delighted when I think about this story that this story reminds me that God is a God who delights in confounding our common sense, who seems to delight in thwarting our best wisdom, a reminder that, that the story of God is not bound by what we don't have. I hear in this story a reminder to look to Christ who reveals to us God in the fullness of how we have understood God to be. I'm reminded of this story, and I, I wonder if this story, if part of the value of this story is the word that it offers to the disciples of every generation, all the disciples who have found themselves in similar moments like the disciples in the story today. They have looked out over the landscape and they have seen the crowds, the multitude of needs, and they have looked in their own lunchbox and they have recognized they were wanting to do something, but what they had in their possession was nothing compared to such need. I hear in this story a word to the weary disciple to the disciple who looks at the need and is so overwhelmed by the need. We had an opportunity this past Thursday to, to celebrate our preschool graduation. It's been a long time coming since everything shut down, but we were able to have an outdoor preschool graduation, and we celebrated that with the kids. We were thrilled to be able to do that. I had the opportunity yesterday to be a part of the high school graduation here in Highlands. Finally, here in August, uh, our seniors, our class of 2020, uh, they were able to come outside. Everybody was masked and distanced, and we were able to celebrate uh, the Highlands class of 2020. We're grateful for that. You know, we continue to navigate uh, during a strange time. 2020 has been such a strange and, and challenging year a global pandemic, racial injustice, societal unrest, uh, political polarization, and now we've just entered into hurricane season. <laughs> it's just so much. It's just so overwhelming. And we feel it too. We're weary. And we're tired. We need to be fed. And Jesus calls us to feed. And we are tempted to respond just like the disciples. We have nothing here. But Jesus says, give me what you have, even if it's nothing. I'm reminded of the, of the words of Henry Nouwen when he reminded us that that like the elements of Holy Communion, we as Jesus' followers are blessed and broken to be given away. We might make that connection with our story today, just as Jesus blessed and broke the loaves and they were distributed, we are called with our own lives, empowered by God to be physical representations of the presence of Christ in the world. We gather today for the service of Holy Communion. Once again, we're celebrating virtually there, wherever you are and we who are here in this virtual space. And we will be reminded once again of Christ's mysterious presence with us. And we will be reminded that we are called to be the disciples of Jesus and to be about the ministry not only of being fed but of feeding as we come to the table today, wherever that table may be. My prayer is that God will empower us with the compassion of Christ so that we might see our neighbors as Christ sees our neighbors. And that in seeking to feed the hungry, care for the hurting, to be the hands and feet of Christ in the world, even with our meager fare that looks to us as nothing in light of the great need of the world. May God empower us 
so that we may simply do the work that he calls us to do. And as we seek to be a blessing, may we know the blessings of God. And may God, through the mystery of God's Holy Spirit and the presence of the risen Christ, take our nothing and turn it into 12 baskets overflowing in abundance to the glory of God. In the name of the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. I invite you to follow along as we engage in our liturgy for Holy Communion. Your response will be in the green. So there, wherever you may be today, please respond with us. Christ our Lord invites to his table all who love him, who earnestly repent of their sin and seek to live in peace with one another. Therefore, let us confess our sin before God and one another. Merciful God, we, your church, confess that often your spirit has not been that of Christ, for we have failed to love one another as he loves us, for we have pledged loyalty to him with our lips and then betrayed, deserted, or denied him. Forgive us, we pray. And by your spirit, make us faithful in every time of trial through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Let us take a moment of silence for our own individual confession. Who is in a position to condemn? Only Christ. But Christ suffered and died for us, was raised from the dead and ascended on high for us, and continues to intercede for us. Believe the good news. In the name of Jesus Christ, you are forgiven. In the name of Jesus Christ, you are forgiven. Glory to God. Amen. Join us now in the great thanksgiving. The Lord be with you and also with you. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give our thanks and praise. It is right and a good and joyful thing always and everywhere to give thanks to you, Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. From the earth you bring forth bread and create the fruit of the vine. You formed us in your image, delivered us from captivity, and made covenant to be our sovereign God. You fed us manna in the wilderness and gave grapes as evidence of the promised land. And so with your people on earth and all the company of heaven, we praise your name and join their unending hymn. Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of power and might, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. Holy are you and blessed is your son, Jesus Christ. When we had turned aside from your way and abused your gifts, you gave us in him your crowning gift. Emptying himself that our joy might be full, he fed the hungry, healed the sick, ate with the scorned and forgotten, washed his disciples' feet, and gave a holy meal as a pledge of his abiding presence. By the baptism of his suffering, death, and resurrection, you gave birth to your church, delivered us from slavery to sin and death, and made with us a new covenant by water and the Spirit. On the night in which he gave himself up for us, he took bread, gave thanks to you, broke the bread, gave it to his disciples, and said, Take, eat, this is my body which is given to you. Do this in remembrance of me. When the supper was over, he took the cup, gave thanks to you, gave it to his disciples and said, Drink from this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant, poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. And so in remembrance of these, your mighty acts in Jesus Christ, we offer ourselves in praise and thanksgiving as a holy and living sacrifice in union with Christ's offering for us as we proclaim the mystery of faith. Christ has died. Christ is risen. Christ will come again. Pour out your Holy Spirit on us gathered together virtually in this sacred space. And on the gifts of bread and the fruit of the vine, we have gathered and prepared for this holy meal in this holy moment that we share together. Make these gifts from you be for us the body and blood of Christ, that we may be for the world the body of Christ redeemed by his blood. By your Spirit, make us one with Christ, one with each other, and one in ministry to all the world until Christ comes in final victory and we feast at his heavenly banquet. Through your Son, Jesus Christ, with the Holy Spirit in your holy church, all honor and glory is yours, Almighty Father, now and forever. Amen. I'm going to invite our worship team to come and gather with me here in the front. We have all uh, brought our own communion elements like you are at home. Because there is one loaf, we, though we are many, are one body, for we partake of the one loaf in this virtual space. 
The bread which we break is a sharing in the blood of Christ, and the cup over which we give thanks is a sharing in the blood of Christ. Would you join us now as we receive the body of Christ given for you? Amen. The blood of Christ given for you. Amen. Would you bow with me in prayer? Almighty God, we give you thanks for this holy meal and the mystery of this meal which you have given yourself to us. Enable us now to give ourselves back to you by giving ourselves to one another. Help us truly to be broken bread and, and poured out wine for the world that your love and grace and mercy and compassion may be embodied in us. In your holy name we pray, amen. Would you join us now for our closing song this morning? Break Thou the Bread of Life. Now join with me in our closing prayer, written by Hugh Cameron of Scotland. Won't you bow your heads in prayer? Almighty God, in a world of change, you placed eternity in our hearts and gave us power to discern good from evil. Grant us sincerity that we may persistently seek the things that endure, refusing those which perish, and that amid things vanishing and deceptive, we may see the truth steadily, follow the light faithfully, and grow ever richer in that love which is the life of all people. Through Jesus Christ, our Savior. Amen. And now, let's join the band and fly away.
Thank you for joining us as we have gathered in worship in this virtual space on this Sunday morning, August the 2nd. Uh, thanks to our worship team here. Thanks to you for being with us this morning. Would you receive now this word of benediction? And after Susan has her postlude, we'll gather for a few moments uh, in our virtual coffee hour, and we would invite you to join us along with that. Again, Mike has put that Zoom link in the comment section. Go forth in peace. May the love of God, the grace of Jesus Christ, the fellowship and communion of the Holy Spirit be with you now and forever. Amen. Go in peace.